Well, hey everyone, this is Don Smith, and I'd like to welcome you to my November tip of the month. Uh, I've been uh, in the process with my wife, Barry, we've made a move to the beautiful Central Coast area of California. And, uh, but during that process, it took up a lot of my time, as you can well imagine, if you've moved in the past, we moved from a home we had lived in for close to 30 years and downsize now, we're empty nesters. Uh, but now, as we're getting settled into our new house and uh, boxes are becoming less and less, I've had more time now to delve back into um, the photo side of things and trying to help you guys out with some, some of this new software that keeps coming out. And uh, about four or five weeks ago, Lightroom released its version 11, which uh, all of a sudden included this little masking icon up here. And I know a lot of you have probably played with this to some degree. Maybe some of you are experts and should be teaching this video. But I thought I'd walk you through, um, not knowing where you're at, we're gonna touch on a lot of different things. This is by no means meant to be an in-depth tutorial on masking, but I'm gonna open this up. Let's first look at um, some of the new uh, features that are in here, which uh, I don't know if we can call them new, but they're new to Lightroom, and that's Select Subject and Select Sky. That came over from Photoshop. Um, we'll, we'll play with that on both landscape and uh, wildlife. And then you have the three that were in there in the past, which were brush, linear gradient, and the radial gradient. And, um, but what I like is they've also kept in color range and luminance range, but they've made them independent of these three. In the past, we had to work with, make a selection with one of these three and then came in and refined it with color range or luminance, but now these work on their own and we'll see how those work. So uh, this is a picture of uh, the famous Morro Rock here in Morro Bay. This is on the north end of Morro Bay. It's a uh, volcanic rock, one of nine that goes, starts uh, east of here in San Luis Obispo, California, and runs down uh, the spine of the mountains out towards the coast here. And uh, there are nine, but seven are very prominent, so they, they are referred to as the Seven Sisters, as I'm finding out. So what masking is, let me give you a quick definition. If masking is just brand new to you, if it's a foreign ter term or it scares you, I know it makes a lot of people nervous. I don't want to work with masks. That's, that's, it's too complicated. But it's really not. All it is is selecting a portion of the image that you want to make localized changes to. In other words, a global change uh, would be if I, you know, I'm on the basic tab here. If I uh, slid my exposure slider around, that's what we call a global change. Every area of that image or every pixel in that image is going to be affected. What a localized uh, selection means is we're going to isolate and just tell Lightroom, hey, this is all I want to work in. So in this particular photo, I've decided I want to break it up into four parts. The sky, moral rock, this area over here, which is a sandbar, it's some cool looking sand dunes, and then the water itself. Okay, so I think the best way, instead of trying to verbalize all of this, um, is let's just dive in and I'll just start walking you through a few images and show you, uh, to my knowledge at this point, how I would process these images. Um, so first of all, I'm going to come in here and what, as I mentioned, Select Sky and Select Subject have come over from Photoshop. So I'm very comfortable with them and especially the Select Sky. It tends to work really quickly and really well. Now, this green overlay is um, showing me that just the sky itself is selected. And before we move forward, let's talk about the little panel itself. I'll do a quick rundown. I can pull this and move this anywhere around. In fact, I think when I first opened it, it was by default sitting up in here. I can dock it over into here. I can dock it into any area I, I wish, but it just makes sense for me to dock it over in the panel. And then you'll see below it kind of a modified version or a cutback version of the basic panel. So it doesn't have, for example, it doesn't have vibrance and luminance in there, but it has a lot of the other uh, functionality 
that we can um, u utilize to work on the area that the mask has selected. Uh, we have a show overlay. I can take this off and I can still make movements and just that area is selected. So that doesn't mean by turning that off that I've canceled the mask. It just means I've taken the color away. And speaking of the color now, we, we can change this mask to any color you can dream of. Uh, I happen to use green. It just seems to be the flavor I'm working with right now. I can change the opacity of that color. I can tell it to leave it in the area that I want to work on or to show me the area that it will not be affected. Uh, I just tend to leave it to the affected area. I think that just makes more sense to me. So generally the way I work is uh, I'll make the selection if the mask looks good uh, as this one does, then I will turn off the overlay function and then I will make my changes. One other thing before we move forward, um, and I can, uh, I want to show you, I can turn this on or off, I'll leave it on. Well, excuse me. <laughs> and is the clip, uh, select these three little ellipses over here, these three dots. And there's different ways you can view these masks. Uh, this would be more akin to what we would see utilizing something like the Tony Kuiper TK8 in Photoshop, just a black and white mask and anything in between. So in a mask, Anything that's white will get the effect. Anything that's black will not. Anything that's gray will get a percentage of it. And it's usually just a visual thing that we can, we can modify. So I'm going to leave this just to uh, color overlay on color. And let's get to work. So the first thing I want to do with this sky is I want to warm up this area of orange and uh, yellows down here a little bit. So I'm going to do make that move. I'm going to move it a little to the right, maybe about 40 points of yellow. But if you see what happens, I'm going to reset this and I want your eye to watch this blue area right up in here. As I move to yellow, I'm obviously moving away from blue. So I'm getting the effect down here that I want, but I've lost this nice blue that we had up in the sky. So how do we get around that? Well, this is something that took me probably the longest to wrap my head around when I was learning these, and it's called intersect width. So if I hover over this uh, mask icon or even the sky icon, you'll see I get the three ellipse. And um, if I click on it, you're going to see this intersect width. And as I hover over that, I get the three, I get the same um, seven choices that I've had when I first created this mask. Now, I should hit on this depth range is grayed out. Depth range, you have to have a camera that writes a depth file for that to be active. And usually you're gonna find those in the, um, oh, your cell cameras, uh, your, your smartphone cameras. So this is not gonna be something we're gonna work on today. All these images uh, were shot on my Sony cameras, so um, I did not have that turned on. Okay, so let's get back. I want to intersect uh, this sky with um, a blue. I, I want to select this blue. And what that's going to say is where I've intersected this mask, which currently is the full selection of the sky. And now I'm going to select just the blue. And I'll show you how I do that in just a moment. That's going to create a secondary mask that I can work with. So the the way for me to do that that made most sense was to click on color range because I want to click, come in here and I want to select the blues. Now, a couple ways I can do it. You can see I have an eyedropper here and I can start clicking around and I get up to five clicks and I think that's the way I am going to do it. Or I can click and drag a section of the sky and let's turn the overlay on and you can see it, it's, it did a pretty good job actually. Um, but I'm going to uh, delete that, and we're just going to do it with uh, the eyedropper. I think I can make it a little more precise. So I'm going to intersect this with color range again, and this time I'm going to click once. You can see it picked up a lot of blues, but um, remember, I get up to five clicks here. So I'm going to try to refine this mask a little more, and I'll even come up in here, and actually I'll do all five. And let's see. Yeah, and now you can see I've really 
um, kind of narrowed that mass down. And I could even take it and narrow it more if I want. But now you can see, especially up in here, that blue isn't going to be affected. So I'm going to leave that alone. And now if I take away the overlay and I move the color temperature back, it's going to bring those blues and richen them up without affecting the orange. So that, I think, is such a cool new function of what's going on here. And that allows you really kind of precision masks. Uh, the only way I was ever to create this before was in the TK8. They do have uh, something similar where I can um, select just a certain color, but they also give me the option to paint away, and I could also do that if I wanted to. Okay, so a lot of different ways you can do these. I'm not going to have time, as I said, to delve into each one of them. I'm just going with what I think makes most sense. So the other cool thing I want to show you, if I double-click on this name, or I came over, uh, let's cancel that out, and just clicked on these three ellipses. Uh, I can rename this mask so I know what it is. So when I come back to this file somewhere down the line, I, I don't see just a bunch of pins. I can go, oh, that was the sky I'm working at, working with, and everything that opens up underneath it. Uh, there's color range and whatever. And I can rename any of these to anything that makes sense to me. Okay, so now that we've worked on the sky, I think I'm gonna work on the rock. So I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna create a new mask. And this time I am gonna say, just for the heck of it, let's select the subject. The subject tends to not work the best, I've noticed, um, in landscapes. It's Again, it's more meant for portraiture or I'm gonna show you a couple frames I got here of uh, some wildlife, some birds flying, and we'll see how it works on that. But this actually did a nice job of selecting the rock. Now, I could subtract out this section here, but it's actually a road and a parking lot. So I'm gonna just leave it be. Uh, I think for this um, uh, demonstration, and let's turn the overlay off, and I'm gonna open up the exposure on this a little bit. And you can start to see these cars coming in. I mean, in the final image, I can go back in and clone those out. Um, generally, when I'm selecting something really dark and opening it up, it's flattening it. So that means I would need to add a little bit of contrast and just uh, play with that back and forth to see what looks natural to your eye. Uh, I might want to lift those shadows up a little bit, not much, and maybe add some texture back in there into the rock. Okay, so now uh, I'm gonna double click that and we're gonna name this rock. Whoops, if I can spell, uh, CK, Don. Huh? And um, so now I've got, uh, I've got my sky mask, I've got my rock mask. Um, let's come down here now and let's work on the water itself. So we're gonna create a new mask. And I think what I'm gonna do on this one is I'm going to select the sky first, because that tended to work pretty well. And then I'm going to click on the icon itself. And you see there's like a sub icon in there. Uh, and I'm showing you this because if you click on these three dots, I'm looking for invert. And there's no invert in there. I have to come down. This threw me too the first time I started working with this. To the second little icon. And now you got inverse the mask. Okay. Now you can see, well, it really hasn't selected just the water. It's got the mask and everything. So now I can click on subtract. And I think for this, I'm going to take a brush. And as I move that brush in, let me hit the right bracket key. It brings it up. And I'm going to subtract out the rock. And a little bit of this area, I'm going to shrink this mask down. Or excuse me, the brush, not the mask. And then I'm going to come over here along the sandbar itself. And we'll take it off of there. And I can always paint this in. So I'm going a little overboard, a little sloppy here. And that's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to build in. You can see that the water is right in there. So I'm going to add. We're going to go to a brush. And we're going to make this even smaller. And we're going to just kind of, I'm going to do this kind of fast and just kind of go 
come down in here. Remember what we're trying to do is just make a selection primarily of the water. And that's actually the area the boat goes out. This is the north end of Morro Bay uh, when they go out to the ocean, which is a um, pretty rough harbor. They actually have a sign that tells you this is one of the more dangerous harbors um, in the entire United States. So um, I'm going to make sure this is all massed in. And that, that's pretty good now. That's close enough. Okay, so what do we want to do? We want to change this to water. Okay, <laughs> you can see I, I failed typing in, um, in school. I'm, my eyes are darting to the screen and everywhere but where they should be. Okay, let's, um, let's just go here and we're going to turn the overlay off. And what do I want to do with the water? Well, the sky was nice and warm, so I want to warm up that water. Okay, and I may even throw in a little bit of magenta. Uh, let's take the highlights down just a tad. No, I think I like them. Let's leave those alone. And this is what I like too. You can come out to these little eyeballs, similar if you're used to using layers in Photoshop. Turn your effect on, turn your effect off. And I actually am going to back that down a little bit. I could even come down here and I could change the hue if I wanted to. Um, I don't want to in this case. <laughs> okay, so now we have three masks built in. We've worked the sky, the rock, the water. And lastly, I think I want to see if I can reveal a little bit more of um, the sandbar. But before I go away from the water, I think... I think I'm looking in here, it's pretty dark. Let's just see if we move the shadows up. Yeah, that's gonna make that a little less dark in there. And I can even there, I'm gonna leave that be. Okay, and the reason that is I could make a selection of this too, is because remember that was the that was the reflection of this dark rock. So now it becomes a point, well, hey, you know, maybe I've lightened that rock up too much. So now I may have to go back in and take that rock down a little bit to make this reflection look a little more realistic. So these are all the things you're going to be thinking of as you're working with these masks. But let's move on. We're going to make one more mask uh, for this sandbar. And I think the easiest way for that is to do a brush. And by default, it just uh, defaults to 100%. And I can move this brush and make it a little less and again I don't have to be perfect on these I can come back in and touch them up when I'm done but uh, I want to click on the mask here and that would give me the subtract and whoops I gotta click subtract the brush you can see now I can touch that up a little bit and I kind of spilled over the top up here okay I'm gonna add one more uh, brush because I didn't quite finish out all the way over into here and okay so that would be a way to do it um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn off the overlay and let's just bring the exposure up some back in there just to bring out a little bit of detail okay just like so and uh, I'm going to go now to a before and after view. So that's what we started. That's what we've come to. And um, quite a change. Just by using four masks and isolating my way around the picture, uh, we've made quite a change. Okay, let's move on to another image. Okay, let's take a look at another example here of a landscape shot. Pretty simple shot. This is just some beautiful sunset lit clouds over a mountain. But a few things I want to do here. I, I want to bring up the warmth in the clouds and um, also bring out the detail in the foreground. And can we do it just with masks? Well, let's, similar to the last picture, let's start out with a select sky. And that did a great job. And so I'm going to turn that overlay off. And I'm going to come up and I'm just going to bump up the warmth in the clouds. But as uh, we saw in the other picture, it kind of flattens out and desaturates these blues, right? Okay, so we know we can come over here to these three ellipses and intersect it with a color range. 
and um, I'm going to click up here in the sky. And I remember, I get up to five clicks. I'll get a good sampling. Three, and we'll come down into here. And let's just see what it looks like, which is four clicks. Yeah, it's pretty much got it. And then you have this refine area here where you can back it off or dial it in even more. And I'm going to leave it about like that. And now I will turn the mask off and we'll come back in and we'll bring that beautiful blue in. Okay, so um, I think that's about it. Now I want to add, I want to work on this foreground, but if I was to select um, subject, well, let's try it and see what happens. Let's see if it knows the mountain. Nope, it's going to select, uh, this is what I find, it's going to select the cloud. And this is what I find goes haywire in landscape photography. So the workaround on this is to add a select sky. Okay, and um, then we're going to come over here. And remember, we're looking for invert, but if we're on the main mask, we won't find it. So we have to come down to the secondary mask, and there's invert. And now we got a selection of just the foreground. So let me turn that off. What do I want to do? I want to bring it out a little bit. So I'm going to open it up a little bit. Remember, if I open up anything too dark, it tends to flatten out. So I've got to build some contrast back in. Maybe open up the shadows. And now, I, you know, we, we pretty much have it. I could act, add a little bit of texture. And um, I think that's looking pretty good. So those are some simple ways that I've come up with with working with just landscape uh, pictures. Let me show you the before and after on this. It's pretty simple just by use, utilizing some of these masks. I want to take it a step further now, and I, I wanted to see what the power of select subject would be. So um, I've got three different shots of goals that I want to go through, and we'll, we'll wrap this video up on this. And obviously, if I select subject on this, it does a fantastic job. It's really, that, that's what I want. Okay, let's go on to the second picture. Oh, and by the way, well, okay, you've got it selected, Don. What could you do? Well, I could bring, it, I could bring up the exposure a little. Uh, I could bring out the, the shadows a little, and maybe um, let's go back here and let's invert it, okay, and let's richen up those blues, okay? So pretty cool, just two clicks, and uh, we'll do a before and after. We kind of went from a dull picture to something a little more pop and color into it. That's that easy. Let's go now. I wanted to really test this select subject and let's see if it can get these two goals together and it did it that's pretty cool i am pretty impressed with that because I, I didn't know if it would just uh search you know for one over the other i could lighten those up a little whatever i want to do to the goals add a little contrast to it um I don't know what De Hayes would do. Ooh, no, don't like that. <laughs> but you get a sense. All right, the last one here. Let's come to a picture where uh, you ever watch that movie by Alfred Hitchcock called The Birds? I felt like I was actually in a movie, The Birds. This was a flock of birds, uh, seagulls, and I was standing on the opposite side when they were on the sand and somebody was walking towards me and they took off and boom, I was right in the middle of these guys, but it's pretty cool. So I don't know how good select subject is gonna work with this, but we're gonna give it a go. And yeah, it kind of, it kind of, um, you know, picked some of them up. Now you're saying, well, what if we add uh, another select subject? Let's see what would happen. And now uh, it's just wanting to stay right on uh, these birds that it selected. So um, probably other ways around this, I could select the sky and then deselect the birds out of it. But you know, all these tools have a little bit of their limitations. Then how do I go down and get these birds separated out against the water? This would actually be more easy to do in something like the TK8 mask. But again, this is a great starting point for those of you who are new to the world of masking, or even those of you that have some intermediate uh, level of knowledge. I think if you're going really advanced, you're probably working on one of these panels. But nonetheless, for some simple images, 
um, where the masking isn't that super uh, extravagant, I can find myself working pretty easily into Lightroom and not having to leave the Lightroom uh, eco structure and go over to, to uh, Photoshop to build the mask. So it's kind of cool. It's going to be interesting to see as the AI technology evolves, how much this evolves. But for a first iteration, very impressed. Uh, I give it, you know, two thumbs up for whatever that's worth. Uh, and I, I will be utilizing this. So hopefully this video whets your appetite and you guys get in there and just start playing with this. This is the way you learn this software. It's not going to happen overnight. Just play with it and make your mistakes, and eventually this will become second nature to you. So um, until next month, this is Don Smith, and I hope you guys get out there a lot with your cameras and stay creative, and uh, we'll see you then.